Hi and welcome to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aitken and on this show each week, I take a look at some upcoming races in Hong Kong and try to isolate an element of the race we might look back on later as having been crucial to the result. Well, this week in Hong Kong, Saturday racing and the first race we're going to take a look at is race nine and our winning factor here, the draw. So we take a look at the field and uh, I think the main players here look to be Beauty Spirit, who's racing quite well. Craig Starr, he looked unlucky last start. A win-win, who returned from an injury break with a very good uh, success. Kazi Ferrazi, he's had a change of stables now. And down the bottom of the weights, Joyful Heart. But mostly here I want to focus on two horses that ran in the same race last start, and that's uh, Craig Starr and Joyful Heart, and they finished second and 11th on that occasion. But we're gonna take a look at that race in a minute, and I'm gonna make a case as to why there won't be that sort of margin between them when they meet again on Saturday. So let's take a look at that race, and this is race 708. Now, Craig Starr, green and yellow colors. Uh, he was well drawn, uh, landed just behind the leaders, getting an easy run all the way. Well, you see Joyful Heart uh, out wider from gate 13, red and yellow colours. He's working hard around the field for the first half of the race uh, before finding a three wide trail in midfield. And if you look at the heat map here, uh, it's a race where you did really want to be uh, on the speed. It was going to be tough to finish off uh, anyway. You see they sprinted home from the 800 metres. And Joyful Heart has spent a lot of his energy here before the race even gets serious. And we see him in the straight. He struggles to mount a challenge at all. While Craig Starr, he's been keeping his powder dry just behind the lead, has plenty for the finish, and uh, he certainly looks a bit unlucky here after being disappointed for a run going up on the inside of the leader. So we had two different kinds of uh, unlucky there, and uh, one of them is the kind that uh, most punters like to focus on. That's the horse in the final stages who gets blocked or having to change course, and that was Craig Starr. But the less obvious uh, unlucky run is often the horse who works early, uh, can't get into a reasonable uh, targeting position and is never really a factor. And that was what we saw in that event. And that's been a little bit the story of Joyful Heart's season. He's had 11 starts, five of them uh, this season from gates 12 and wider. And that one from gate 13, yet another unlucky uh, story. But if we take a look at the map, for this race on Saturday. Now he's drawn inside. Now there looks to be a little bit of uh, speed in the race. And uh, once again, Craig Starr, he's well drawn, looks to have an energy saving run. But so too this time does Joyful Heart. That should help him be a little closer to the lead anyway, but also saving him up for the finish with a draw from gate two. And if he can save his energy for the finish, we have seen Joyful Heart reel off some very strong finishing sectionals uh, in his races at times, and that makes me swing around to him. So a race nine, the tip is for Joyful Heart, his winning factor, the draw. I think both he and Craig's star will be uh, big players in this race. Craig's star, a little unlucky last time, but I think so too was Joyful Heart. And in case you hadn't guessed, the second race we're going to take a look at on the 10 race card on Sunday is in fact race 10. And our winning factor here, the map. Now this is a nice class two race to finish the day. Uh, there'll be fans for the John Moore stable mates, uh, buddies in good standing, they've got chances. The Zach Purton's mount, happy fun. The lightweight circuit three and young legend who've had some good recent form. And also the third of the John Moore runners and that's Dan Control. And while I do think that the weights are going to play a major role here, the thing that really stands out to when you first look at this race is where some of the main protagonists are going to map. And if we take a look first at the map, uh, quite a few on-speed runners here, but many of them, horses like Buddies, Beauty Applause, Beauty Rush and Happy Fun, uh, they are drawn out wide and they're going to put each other under pressure early uh, looking for places up the front end of the race and there's a little bit of handy tactical speed beneath them too a good standing more than lucky dan control young legend they'll all be looking to establish their places 
even if they aren't looking for the front. So that sets the pace up to be good and it might even be a little faster than that. And I think the horses best able to use that scenario are the ones at the bottom of the weights. That's Dan Control, Circuit 3 and also Young Legend. And Circuit 3, he's had a patchy time lately with a few health issues. So I'm going to put him behind the others and concentrate on the two, Young Legend and Dan Control. First of all, we're going to take a look at the last start of Young Legend. And this takes us back to race 669. This is class three. And Jerry Chow aboard here, the 10 pound claimer. And he gave Young Legend a good trip here just behind the speed. And uh, you can see Young Legend, the uh, black and red colors with the white sleeves. Uh, he tries his heart out in the straight and uh, he really wasn't beaten far at the finish over 1200 meters. Now Young Legend rises in class here and that's something that regular viewers of the show uh, will know I focus on as a positive in Hong Kong racing going up in class. Uh, but because he had the 10 pound claim there, he doesn't get quite the same plummet in the weights that they normally get changing class. So that's uh, a little dampener on the enthusiasm for Young Legend. So then let's take a look at the last start of Dan Control. and. Uh, this is race 728 and I want you to note the uh, heat map here. This is a, a day that uh, was favouring front runners so we saw a lot of pressure on the front end. This was the last race of the day, by then the pattern was well established. And they were really hiking along here, the leaders, and Joe Marrera from a wide gate he presses forward on Dan Control and he has to use plenty of energy to get forward into the first four in running with the speed that they were going. Now uh, he does eventually get into a nice spot and was another one who was very brave going down by half a length at the finish. That was also Dan Control's second run only after a lengthy break with some health issues. So uh, at the end of a long season, he's coming into this race, one of the fresher runners uh, with still probably plenty of uh, running in him. And that's going to be a plus as well. So the tip in race 10 is Dan Control, his winning factor, the map. This time he gets a nice run where he can save his energy for the finish while some of his rivals are going to get burned up along the way and that's going to make them easy prey for him in the straight. Well, that's it for the winning factor this week. Good luck on Saturday. We'll see you next time.